Hi everybody, uh, today's lecture is going to be focusing on adaptive immune system. So if you guys recall from our last lecture, uh, we broke down the uh, immune system to two major categories. One was innate immunity and the other one is adaptive immunity. The key way of describing innate immunity was to discuss it in a sense of um, lack of specificity and the fact that it is relatively weaker compared to your adaptive immunity. It works at two separate levels, one by preventing the pathogen injury in the first place and if the pathogen was able to uh, come into the body, then it can help uh, fight off the infection in a very non-specific uh, pattern. And for that, you're relying heavily on um, inflammatory responses, fever, complement protein, etc. Now, the other main difference, the other main characteristic uh, for the innate immunity was the lack of memory in these systems. So basically, regardless of how many times a bacteria or a pathogen has entered the body, there is no difference in the strength of the um, response your body creates to defend itself, if we're discussing it in a sense of innate immunity. On the other hand, we have adaptive immune system or adaptive defenses. This adaptive system is known for the fact that it's very specific and when if if identified its proper uh, pathogen, uh, it creates an amazingly large response to remove uh, all of the pathogen from the system uh, that can be identified using the adaptive immunity. The problem with this system, even though it's a strong, it's relatively a slow process if it's happening and it's initiating for the first time. And we'll get into this in more detail as we go through this PowerPoint. So let's just start talking about some, some more characteristics of the adaptive immune system. As I mentioned, one of the key main differences is the uh, fact that it is considered to be specific um, in a sense that it has to identify its specific antigen. You guys remember we shorthand antigen to AG. And when that identification and recognition takes place, then you have the immune response uh, slowly being activated for the first time and um, when it does get activated it is a very strong response. Um, it is going to happen throughout your systems throughout the body which means that it's basically going to track all of the antigens that are identical to the original one that has stimulated the immune response and therefore creates and destroy create an immune response against all of them and destroy them throughout the body not just the target location. It also has the ability to recognize a pathogen if it interacts with it for um, multiple times after the first or initial recognition. So anytime after the first recognition, you form memory against those antigens uh, from the pathogen and therefore have the ability to trigger an immune response against it. Now, if you guys remember uh, from the previous PowerPoint, one of the main cells that are essential for formation of adaptive immunity or in general immunity is cells called lymphocytes, which we categorize them to B cells and T cells. Now, B cells and T cells are going to form the two main categories of adaptive system or adaptive immune system. Humoral, what we identify as humoral, or antibody-mediated immunity is driven by your B cells or is created by your B cells. And what we identify as cellular or cell-mediated immunity is associated with your T cells. So let's expand on that and see how each of these uh, categories of cells are responsible for adaptive immunity. So let's just start discussing them in the sense of immunity and the defense of the body. Humoral immunity, as I mentioned, is going to be um, part of the adaptive immunity. It is the only system or immunity that is going to produce antibodies. So as soon as you hear antibody, automatically think 
B cells and automatically think about humoral immunity. Uh, it is circulating freely through the body because what antibodies are, they're just basically proteins. There's nothing specific about them. They do a lot of jobs, but in reality, all they are, they are proteins. Um, what do they do when they identify their proper antigen? They are going to either temporarily inactivate the cell or the toxin, and then also, this is a more important one, they mark them for destruction. Destruction in a sense of either phagocytosis, and everybody by now should know what phagocytosis was. Basically, you eating up the bacteria, you could use the process, we, we refer to it as the complement protein, where you put a bunch of holes inside the bacteria or the infective agent, allowing a lot of fluid to come in and basically burst the cell, and etc. Again, we're not going to go into that much depth in the sense of content. Now, humoral immunity is done by B cells. On the other hand, we have cellular immunity, which is done or driven by T cells. Um, it is um, important in a sense of destroying or removing cells of your own body that have been infected. Your own cells that have been infected by either viruses or bacteria are going to be destroyed by your uh, cellular immunity or cell-mediated immunity. Um, it, in many cases, they are releasing chemicals that are going to um, enhance the inflammatory responses in your body and therefore basically create a stronger response in your, um, uh, create a stronger defense against the pathogen. Um, one of the things that gets released, and we're going to get take a look at them later on, is molecule called cytokines. Now, if we continue, we keep mentioning the word antigen. You should sound, it should sound familiar to you from when we did the blood typing. But again, antigens, or we simply shorthand them to AG, are any type of molecules, typically proteins, that are found on the surface of your cells. And not only they help you find something that is foreign, but they also help you identify your own cells. Um, so basically, it's a way of distinguishing self from non-self cells. Non-self versus self. So you have the ability to say, oh, this antigen is my own, so I don't need to do anything. But this antigen, I'm saying, is associated with something foreign that has gained access to the body, and therefore I'm going to trigger an immune response against that. In this picture, you can see the antigen in red. Basically, you have multiple sites where, uh, with different uh, edges. So you see right here versus here versus here. There are different presentations of the antigen, and each of them are binding to a different antibody. And again, I'm expanding on the concept of antibody in just a few minutes. So how do I create an immunity? doesn't matter which branch of the adaptive immunity, but if we're talking about adaptive immunity, when we're talking about adaptive immunity, we are talking about two main branches of adaptive, right? What we identify as humoral and what we identify as cell mediated. So in these two branches, humoral was produced by B cells and cell mediated is produced by T cells, right? But if I want to have that effective immunity created, I also need to rely on a specific type of cells called antigen presenting cells or APCs. Now, as the name implies, antigen-presenting cells are basically cells that are going to eat up the pathogen. They're not going to relatively, they're not necessarily going to destroy every possible pathogen, but let's say they're going to take one of the bacterias, engulf them, eat them, break them out into the pieces, and literally present that antigen to the T cells and make them become activated. 
So these categories of cells that we're discussing here, sorry, one second. Um, so these categories of cells that we identify as antigen-presenting cells could be cells called dendritic cells, which are these cells with very long extensions coming off of them. And what they do is they literally grab a bacteria and they bring them in and then engulf them. Similar factor, uh, similar uh, functions associated with cells called macrophages. And again, a reminder, they're originating from monocytes. And B cells, uh, which have their own category, also can act as antigen-presenting cells that causes the activation or help with activation of T cells. So I have three categories of cells, antigen-presenting cells, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes. B are going to do humoral, T is going to cellular, and for them to be activated, especially T lymphocytes, you need what? Antigen-presenting cells to bring out an antigen and literally think about them. They present them to the big god, which is your T lymphocytes, and that triggers the whole process of your immunity. Here's a picture of the dendritic cells that are shown on the right-hand side. Um, again, uh, dendritic cells, all they do is they phagocytose your pathogen and allow them to be presenting, uh, that enables them to present their antigen to the T cells. Uh, we have macrophages, which are doing the same function. Uh, all they do is basically they eat up the um, pathogen and then present an antigen. And B lymphocytes, um, um, don't worry about the naive T cells for now, but all they do is to present the antigen to help a specific category of uh, T cells called helper cells to be activated. They're not the only ones, again, it's, it's a very complex system, but B lymphocytes do play a role as antigen presenting cells. So we keep thinking about talking about B cells and T cells. So how do these B cells and T cells become what they are that play a role in your immunity? This is this process that allows them to become these big part of the immune response and big part of the adaptive immunity um, is uh, a five-step process, which starts with basically their production. So when they say origin, we're talking about the production of your B cells and T cells, B and T cells. Uh, we then mature them, which is also very important. Uh, maturation gives them the ability to recognize whatever that is foreign. Uh, seeding secondary lymphoid organs, they circulate. They identify the corresponding antigen. And when they do that, they get excited and they go through a process called proliferation and then differentiation. So let's go ahead a step further and look at each of these steps in a little bit more detail. Maturation. Let's just start with maturation, which is, oh, sorry, not maturation, um, production, which is the first step. So let me write this down for you guys. So when we're talking about production, something we discussed last time, we divided the lymphoid organs to primary and secondary lymphoid organs. Within primary, I have a branching which was marrow, or I should say, sorry, I'm going to go up, bone marrow, and the other one which is identified as primary was your thymus which is right above your heart. Now, what is the function of bone marrow? Bone marrow is responsible for production, this is a keyword, guys, production of both, what cells? B and T cells. So bone marrow produces both categories of your um, immune cells or uh, adaptive immune cells, which are your B cells and T cells. And if you guys remember, they use a specific type of a stem cell called lymphoid stem cell. 
Now, we also have a secondary, um, a second primary organ system within your lymphatic organ system called the thymus. What is the function of the thymus? Thymus job is to mature your T cells. So, going back again to what I was discussing, first step is maturation, right? Sorry, first step, no, sorry. First step is production, which for both cells would be bone marrow, right? But now you have them and you want to educate them. So you had the baby, but now they want the baby to go to school. So how do you do that? If the cells that are produced um, stay within your bone marrow to mature, we refer to them as B cells. Hence the B for B cells. However, if these cells move to thymus to mature, they basically go to public school, we refer to them as T cells. So B cells are homeschool, T cells are going to public school. Now, what is the goal of maturation? What they do when they mature, they gain a capacity called immunocompetency, which basically means they gain the ability to recognize only one specific antigen. So they won't just go randomly and say, oh, I, need to, I know this, I know this, I know this. They will know only and only one specific antigen. And when they see that antigen, that's where they start their work. So you produce them, you mature them, and now they're basically identified as naive B cells and T cells. They have the ability to identify an antigen, which means they are immunocompetent but they haven't really been exposed to their antigen. So they're just kind of relaxing. So they got their education, but they haven't found a job yet. So these naive cells, these cells we identified as naive, which are immunocompetent but inactive, are going to basically be stored in your secondary lymphatic organs. So they are produced, mature to gain immunocompetency, and then you store them in your secondary lymphoid organs, waiting for, basically, their corresponding antigens. So, what happens after, eventually, for many of these um, B cells and T cells, they eventually encounter their corresponding antigen. And as soon as that original uh, recognition takes place, now your naive lymphocytes become what? Become active, become recognized, become excited because they have identified something. So they go from the naive cells that we had to an active cell, okay? When they activate, what they do is you basically identify them that this is the one, this is the antigen, um, that identified and was recognized by these uh, B cells or T cells, and therefore we are going to uh, start to create something called a clonal selection, which basically we're going to start to make additional clones of this lymphocyte. Think about it. You have one lymphocyte. One lymphocyte cannot interact and destroy a lot of pathogens, right? You have hundreds upon thousands of these pathogens roaming around in your body. You can't just rely on one cell. So what do you do next? You proliferate. What is proliferation implies? It means the cell that has been activated are going to make, start to make exact copies of itself. Basically it's gonna do what? Cloning itself. Now most of the clones that are produced are going to be considered the effector cells which are basically the ones that are going to be fighting off the infection. They are the armies of your body that are carrying the immunity. On the other hand, what you will have, you also have a category of cells that are considered to be memory cells. After you fight off the infection, after you got rid of the infection, you don't want to deal with that same thing again, right? So what you do is you leave uh, leave a few of the guards known as memory cells behind. Their job is to roam around the body 
and look for that same antigen throughout the rest of the person's life. And as soon as they see that antigen, what are you going to see? A very quick second time reaction. So you don't wait around and go through naive cells, become activated, and then do clonal selection, etc., etc. You already have a bunch of cells. They know what their target is. And as soon as they see that, they create a very effective secondary response, get rid of the bacteria or the pathogen in general very fast. Here is the same description that I was discussing with you. We have origin, which is basically production. For both B and T cells, that location is red bone marrow. You have maturation, which is if it's a T cell, the maturation happens in your thymus. And if it's B cells, it mature in bone marrow. And what you're gaining during maturation is, again, immunocompetency. Then you store them in the secondary lymphoid organs. And these are considered to be naive cells until they interact with their uh, corresponding antigen. They interact with their corresponding antigen. They get activated. Activation makes, makes more copy of the cell through the process called proliferation. And as you proliferate, you again are going to start to create cells called effector cells that are going to be your army fighting off the infection. And some of these cells are going to remain behind for the rest of your life to act as guards, and they are referred to as memory cells. So let's just stop here, and then we'll continue with the hemoral and cellular immunity in more detail in your next presentation.